untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Monoret Sarkon Wander to Shiv Dragons deck featuring the 4 mana Planeswalker from Historic Jumpstart with 2 plus 1 abilities. The first says Dragon cards in our hand perpetually gain the ability to cost 1 less to cast, so even if they get bounced back to our hand they will still have that mana discount. The second part of that plus 1 not super relevant in a monocolor to red deck. Then a second plus one will conjure a card named Sheevan Dragon into our hand, the six mana 5 5 flyer with fire breathing, a staple from Magic's past. And then the minus two deals three damage to target creature, so a nice way to protect himself. And if you're wondering why some of these numbers are different from the original version of Sarkon Wanderer to Shiv, some of the abilities did get modified over time, so that might solve that confusion. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we have lots of dragons of course, so taking a look at our creatures. Early on we have some mana acceleration as well as you'll see here with Ornithopter of Paradise tapping for one mana of any color. We've got Fearsome Whelp, a new card from Alchemy, a 1-1 flyer saying at the beginning of your end step each dragon card in your hand perpetually gets a one mana discount, so similar to Sarkon's plus one ability. Then we've got Dragon Lord's Servant, a 1-3 making dragon spells we cast cost one generic mana less to cast. Then we also have Dragonkin Berserker, 2-2 two -two first strike with boast, letting us generate a 5-5 dragon and it's cheaper to boast the more dragons we have in play. Then at 3 mana we've got Dragon Egg, an 0-2 dragon that when it dies leaves behind a 2-2 two -two token with fire breathing. We've got Sarkon's Whelp, a 2-2 flyer saying whenever we activate an ability of a Sarkon Planeswalker, the Whelp deals 1 damage to any target, including creatures. We've got Dragon Speaker Shaman, a 2-2 making dragon spells too cheaper to cast. And then a Faceless Agent, a 2-2 changeling that when it enters the battlefield seeks a creature card of the most prevalent creature type in our library. So we get to seek a dragon and put it into our hand. This does not shuffle our library by the way. Then at 4 mana we've got plenty of dragons with Moonvale Regent, a 4-4 flyer that can provide card advantage. Leyline Tyrant can store up our red mana and eventually deal a lot of damage when he dies. We've got Mana Form Hellkite generating dragon illusions when we cast non-creature spells. Opportunistic Dragon can steal humans from the opponent or artifacts. Scion of Shiv can perpetually get bigger. We've got Skyship Stalker with a nice set of abilities including Fire Breathing, gaining First Strike or Haste. We've got Thunder Break Regent punishing the opponent for targeting our dragons. We've got Town Racer Tyrant from Alchemy, a 4-4 flyer that can essentially force the opponent to sacrifice a land unless they want it to deal too damage to them over and over. We've got Varix Bladewing that can be kicked to generate an extra 4-4 flyer. Then at 5 mana we've got Terror of the Peaks, a 5-4 flyer that will deal damage equal to the power of creatures that enter the battlefield under our control to any target. Scargon Hellkite can be a 4-4 with either haste or an extra plus 1 counter, and then can also have a nice activated ability to deal more damage. Glorybringer, one of the better dragons, a 5 mana 4-4 flyer with haste that can exert, meaning it's not going to untap during the next untap step, to deal 4 damage to target a non-dragon creature. We've got Demanding Dragon, a 5-5 that either deals 5 damage to the opponent or they have to sacrifice a creature. Goldspan Dragon with the alchemy nerf, still quite powerful, a 4-4 flyer that can generate treasures that then get sacrificed for twice the amount of mana. And then at 6 mana we've got Inferno of the Star Mount, a 6-6 with Flying and Haste and Fire Breathing that cannot be countered. Lathless Dragon Queen generates dragon tokens when a dragon enters battlefield under our control and can pump all our dragons with the Fire Breathing ability. We've got Terror of Mount Velus giving our creatures double strike until end of turn when it enters the battlefield. And Dracoseth Maw of Flames which can also deal a ton of damage when it attacks. And then taking a look at some of our non-creature spells, at one mana plenty of cheap burn spells with most of them dealing 2 damage, Frostbite deals 3 if we control multiple snow permanents, Lightning Bolt of course, a nice card that we get to play in Historic Brawl, and then mostly 2 damage effects and Light Up the Night can also scale in a late game, can also use a flashback by removing loyalty from our Planeswalkers. Then at 2 mana a Braid can deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact, more damage based burn spells with Dragon's Fire being one of the better ones in this deck. Orb of Dragonkind, another way to ramp or find dragons. We've got 
Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Hearts, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone classics that we can play in multiple brawl decks. And then a Shattered Skull Smashing can be a land or removal spell. We've got more high damage removal with Brittle Blast, which can also exile creatures. Sarkon Scorn also scales with a late game, picking up more damage as time goes on. Spit Flame can also be bought back from the graveyard if we play Dragon. We've got a few other Planeswalkers with Chandra and Dressed to Kill, providing card advantage or mana, as well as Sarkon Fireblood, which can also ramp into our bigger dragons and discard and draw to maybe get rid of removal and matchups where we don't need it. We've got Tundra Fumarole, which also plays with our snow lands. We've got a couple more three mana ramp cards, with Dragon Sword being the best one, as we can potentially draw extra cards when dragons enter the battlefield under our control. Heraldic Banner will pump all our dragons by one. And then we've got Herald's Horn discounting our dragons and potentially providing a bit of card advantage. And Icon Vance's Tree also pumps our dragons and can help us find more. And the Celestus can also introduce the day and night cycle to maybe discard and draw, get rid of some of those burn spells if we don't need them. And Meteor Swarm can also be very powerful at dealing with multiple creatures at once. And then a couple more Planeswalkers with Zariel, Archduke, can potentially give our creatures haste if our dragons don't have haste themselves, or generate a few devil tokens that deal one damage when they die. We've got the Draconic Intervention as potentially a one-sided sweeper, if we can exile an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, dealing damage equal to its mana value to each non-dragon creature. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, very powerful, can add mana, deal damage or provide card advantage. And then as Sarkon the Masterless also plays well with the other Planeswalkers in the deck, turning them into 4-4 dragons, as well as dealing damage to opposing creatures if they attack us, equal to the number of dragons we control, and we can make a 4-4 dragon token right away. And then a mana base, pretty straightforward, lots of snow lands with 34 snow-covered mountains, and one Faceless Haven, now a 3-3 instead of a 4-3. And then a few more creature lands with the Den of the Bugbear, We've got Crawling Barons and Mobilized District, can turn into a 3-3. And then we've got Castle Embereth to pump the team, as well as a Bonders Enclave to potentially draw a card if we control a creature with power 4 or greater. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, up against an Ayara Sacrifice deck. Whenever the opponent's commander dies to Sarkon's 3 damage, we're usually in for a decent matchup. So, yeah, this hand's okay. No early ramp, but I've got some things to do early. So I think I'm okay with that. See the new Cursebound Witch. Opponent can sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower to make an extra mana. So they could already play a Yara. So I'm probably gonna use a Dragon's Fire here to take care of that. Next turn, got a few options. If I don't draw land, I might want to play the Orb so I can still play a 4 mana Dragon on the following turn. Yeah, that makes sense. Opponent with Bontu's Monuments can start draining us too. Okay, so Opportunistic Dragon can steal the Monuments. Or I can Sarkon kill Ayara, which is probably better. And then we can make that play next turn after making all our dragons cheaper, and we've got a lot of dragons in hand to give a discount to. Opponent keeps developing their mana with Arcane Signets. And a duress is gonna have a look, but see only creatures. So let's make things cheaper. All dragons are welcome by my side. And I think stealing monument over Signet makes sense. And next 
maybe go with the Scion of Shiv. Keep the Moonveil as one of our last dragons to maybe make it more likely we can draw extra cards with it. Berserker also looking good with plenty of dragons to make the boast cheaper. So they could replay Ayara. But that's most of their turn gone, and we can just kill it with a minus two, so it doesn't seem all that productive. Alright, that's fine by me. Do have to maybe play around a sweeper, as opposed to unloading my hand here. Dragon Egg is still fine to play into potential sweeper, and then I could attack with the mobilized district perhaps maybe start there could also pump the sign of shiv i guess this is fine maybe still commit an extra dragonkin and a dragon egg and then if they wipe the board, I'll still get a token, still of my district, to keep up the pressure. And a Moonvale Regent as our last card to maybe provide some extra card advantage. Which is Vengeance, gonna be pretty decent here. Can name Dragon. Still leaves the Berserker in play. Like I said at the start, whenever our commander can cleanly deal with the opponent's commander, we usually have a good matchup. Alright, what are my options? So I could discount the Moonvale regions, play it for 2 mana. Is that better than playing Sheevan Dragon? Because then I can actually use the Regent's ability to draw. So maybe that's better. Could also boast with the Berserker. Let's see, this currently costs 3 mana, which would also leave Lightning Bolt available. Probably don't need this as a blocker. So, this one has fear, so I guess we cannot block that one, so let's bolt it. Draw with the Moon Veil. Zariel could be good too. Our opponent's going to need another sweeper here. Crux of Fates would not be particularly effective, but maybe like a Meathook Massacre could get them out of this. They've got 7 mana. And a Torment of Hailfire. We've got quite a bit of life to give. Right, so we're at 3. Pretty sure we can just kill them here. If I animate District and sink a bunch of mana into my Dragon Token... Are we there yet? It's close. Alternatively, this can pump my team, which is probably better. And then this is a dragon, so I can discount it with Sarkon or use the orb mana to play it. Alright, sweet. If I had used Sarkon to play this for 2 mana, I would have been able to boast for 1 mana on the Berserker as well, but it didn't seem necessary. Alright, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, facing a Yorok with the Desecrated, enters the battlefield deck, and our hand's acceptable. A bit of early interaction with Light of the Night to maybe kill a mana creature, and then some acceleration with Servant and Horn. Wouldn't ramp into Sarkon, but makes our Demanding Dragon cheaper, plus maybe future Sheevan Dragons we conjure up. Leafkin Druids does survive my Light of the Night, so play the Servant instead. And then maybe next turn we can deal with a Leafkin. Since I don't want him playing a turn for Yarok. Although Uro might let them do that anyway. Alright, so still interested in potentially killing the Leafkin, but it could be better served saving this to kill Yarok. Problem is, I wouldn't be able to do that next turn, since it still only deals 4 damage, so that does leave me in a rough spot. Could just kill Leafkin, let him play Yarok. Next turn play Demanding Dragon, but the extra advantage that the Yorok provides is going to be a little bit much for us to handle. So, not loving my position right now. Do have an intervention, but don't have a ton of expensive instants and sorceries to go with it at the moment. Alright, Beanstalk for ramp, so at least we're not staring down Yarok just yet. So that gives me time to maybe play Sarkon. And then a Light of the Night could also be flashed back. So let's get our commander out there. Contra up a Shivan Dragon. Don't expect any haste creatures here. Questing beast we won't be able to block anyway. So now if they play Yarok, we have a few ways to answer it. Okay. So how about flashback light of the nights? And that's gonna be Enough to keep my Sarkon around, can conjure up another Sheevan Dragon, or make my dragons cheaper, which I also kind of like here since we have a lot of dragons in hand already. The the so X equals 4 is enough to deal 5 damage. And then next turn I can unload quite a few dragons on the cheap. Opponent puts Yarok back in the command zone. They could just replay it for 7 mana. Goes for Arcane Signets. Into... Potentially 6 mana play here. That's gonna be Baron bouncing my servants. That's okay. And the Demon's Disciple, I guess, will now answer Sarkon, since I don't have a creature to sacrifice, so that makes sense. What's next? I've got six mana. Could place Servants, have four mana left, which is not quite enough to double spell afterwards. So maybe I'm better off playing Herald's Horn. And then I can play a 4 mana dragon for 3 mana. Yeah, that seems good. And kind of liking the tyrant here. Targets 
most likely command tower. Could also go for a castle since our opponent's close to empty handed. So that will deal two to them. Unless our opponent wants to sacrifice it, which they did. Also works. And replace the Arok. Reveal a Pillar of Flame. Enough to kill Baron, but not Yarok. Maybe in the future with Sarkon dealing three. I think we're just interested in unloading a bunch of dragons. Which, let's see if I go Servants for mana. I can play the Leyline Tyrants plus Demanding Dragon. Seems good. Although, could also Pillar of Flame, Baron, to make sure they take 5 instead of sacrificing Baron, but if they sack Baron, I think I'm still fine with it. And then if I draw land, I can make the Pillar of Flame Sarkon play to take out Yarok. Opponent could potentially escape Uro here. Right, Dungeon Geists can lock down two of my creatures now. So definitely something we want to kill with Sarkon given a chance. Did find a land, so I can go after Yarok. Or I can go after Dungeon Geists. Intervention doesn't have much to exile here. Yarok is potentially the bigger long-term problem. And if I kill it now, it's going to be a while before they replay it. Whereas killing the Geists unlocks my dragons to start attacking. I think I still prefer dealing with Yarok. And we'll leave the Tyrant back to protect Sarkon from the Geist. Right, Binding can kill my Tyrants, and then the Geist deals with Sarkon. At least they didn't get to double the triggers of Binding. All right, what's next? Can play a Sheevan Dragon and the Sarkon Fireblood, which can loot away the intervention. Maybe start there. Could also think about Den of the Bugbear, but yeah, I think I'll start with Sarkon. Then we can't forget about our Leyline Tyrant, so still want to float our mana here. And then next turn with the floating mana could replay Sarkon perhaps. To deal with the Geist. Death Sprout kills Shivan Dragon. So they're, they're ramping with a removal, so it wouldn't be long before they replay Yarok, and we could be in trouble. They are down to two cards in hand, now one, still a Beanstalk Giant, and Uro they could access. Especially Uro with Yarok in play can draw lots of cards. But I think I'm into killing the Geist. A dragon bows to no master. I've learned much from dragons. Molus told me I should do this. Uh, 
All right, Serp wins at 22. We can start attacking with our dragons again. But we'll see if Yarok can uh, bring them back into the game. Uro can gain them a lot of life too, so game is far from over. All right, step one, Yarok. So if we can find a way to deal five damage to a creature, that would be great. Doesn't look like it though. Guess we can start by looting with Sarkon. Could also use this for mana to play Shivan Dragon, but can play it pretty easily. Ooh, Spit Flame. So now I could minus and Spit Flame. Don't think there's a way for me to Spit Flame twice this turn by getting a Sheevan Dragon and getting it back from the graveyard. But that's good enough for me. Opponent does have one mana here. Malachi Rebirth. Ooh. Well, I guess now I'm not going to minus with Sarkon anymore. So maybe they should have waited. But um, yeah, let's conjure a Shivan Dragon. A great predator and then I get to buy back my Spit Flame. Points at 11, but probably Uro time now. Never mind. They've got something better. Potentially. Giruda. Doesn't look like it found anything amazing. Just a Skydiver and. Oof, Kogla. Is gonna be pretty painful here. Gets to find two creatures. So the second hits of Giruda a lot better. If Kogla fights both of my untapped creatures, it will die at least. But then Yarok can uh, finish off my Sarkon. Looks like they're just gonna take out two of the bigger dragons instead. And trade away Kogla. Okay. So Yarok can attack, but I can jump with the Servants. And then next turn maybe deal with Yarok. Lots of cards in Graveyard now for Uro to escape. And in fact I can escape it right now. So opponent gets to draw two. Gain six. And this game is starting to slip away from us. Just a little bit too much value in one turn. So, feels like I need to save Sarkom, but facing a lot of power toughness on the other side of the battlefield, Herald's Horn not helping us too much. So, I can loot with Sarkom. Can conjure up another Sheevan Dragon, but feels like I probably need to kill Yarok, even though they can replay it. And then, probably gonna lose my Planeswalkers. Got three loyalty on this one. Step one might be to loot. Unless I have enough mana to cast this twice, but I doubt it. So yeah, let's loot. I don't need this. And then between Orb and Crawling Barons. I'm guessing Barons is going to be more useful. Ooh, Meteor Swarm. Now that's potentially quite powerful. So we can divide 8 damage. Don't really want to kill Uro since they can escape it again, although I guess on attacks it still does some powerful stuff. Hmm, so we could deal 4 here. And then divides between 
three targets. And then I'll conjure up another Sheevan Dragon, I suppose. There is no better ally than a dragon. Suro gets to keep attacking, providing card advantage. We gotta try and kill them in the air. Visionary draws a card. Alright, at least they don't have a Yarok in play at the moment. Fasa can flicker to draw another card with a Visionary. Could be worse. And a Cultivator for ramp, so it won't be long before Yarok enters a battlefield again. And then Thass, I guess, could also start tapping down my dragons if they fall behind in life total, so... It still feels like we're pretty far behind. Okay. So I could replace Sarkon, I think. Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10... Just enough, but seems better to play Sheevan Dragon and then could think about activating some of my lands or I can loot away the mountain in hopes of finding something better. I guess this will have to do. Get back Spitflame. And then could hang on to Spitflame or can play the Icon. What are they likely to flicker with Thassa? They might just replay Yarok. And then I can kill whatever they flicker in response. So it might be worth it to hang on to it. And then Uro probably finishes off Sarkon. And next turn between Icon and the Fire Breathing on Sheevan Dragon, we could threaten lethal, so they might take a different approach and tap down my dragons with Thassa. But nope, opponent goes for Yarok. That's fine. Thassa turns into a creature briefly. I guess they still have a little bit of mana here, but they're gonna mostly tap out for a District Guide. That resolves, so... I think we are in a good spot. Opponent can gain a bit of life with Uro, I suppose. But we have a lot of damage in the air. I'm gonna wait to see what they target with Thassa. Although I might just kill the Cultivator to deny a bit of devotion, so Thassa isn't a creature anymore. No drawback to waiting. And a Paradise Druid, sure. Pona now doing the math to see if they should flicker Uro for the 3 life. Uh, looks like they might go for it, yep. Alright, so... Spitflame probably still killing Cultivator here. 
I guess they're gaining six with uh, Yarok. So... Ulro is not going to be on the battlefield anymore, but our opponent will be able to survive another round of attacks. Even with all the fire breathing from Shivan Dragon. Dragon Speaker. A little bit late to the party. So I guess I'll play the icon, and then the question is whether I need to pump all my mind into the fire breathing, or if I want to find another dragon. And now that our opponent can use Thassa to tap down my dragons, I think I need to find another one. Because they can easily keep two of them tapped down. So yeah, the life gain of Uro making all the difference. Maybe a Tower of the Peaks can deal with a couple of their creatures. It's their opponent on taps with a million mana. They still have plenty of cards in Graveyard, thanks to that Giruda from earlier. So our opponent can gain six. Ooh, Massacre Worm. Times two. And they can flicker it again with Thassa to wipe my board, essentially. So, yeah, I think this is game over. Yeah, once Yarok starts taking over, it's very difficult to come back. Need to have some sort of sweeper to clean up all creatures. But Thassa also kind of circumvents that. And we got close to killing them in the air, but the life gain of Uro, especially doubled by Yarok, was enough here. It's a nice grindy game. Good to see both decks do their thing, but sadly Yarok gonna be victorious here after Massacre Worm gets flickered by Thassa. GG's. Harold's Horn finally finds a dragon. Didn't think that's going to be enough for us. I guess we'll try and kill Yarok here on the way out, just to prove a point. But our opponent should have it here, they can tap down my creatures with Thassa and just attack. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Missing some big dragons to ramp into, but we can always go and get some Shivan dragons. And then for now, we've got early interaction if needed, facing Kathis, so some sort of legendary deck. Go with Signet so we can play Sarkon over playing the Servants. And then I'm happy to conjure Shivan Dragon. Now our Dragon's Fire can deal enough damage to kill Kethys. Hmm. 
and we get to pull ahead with our planeswalker. So exactly where we want to be. So this is happening. And then for now, could go with Icon. Could also make our dragons cheaper, but I feel like we want to conjure an extra Shivan dragon before we do. And then Icon seems pretty efficient here. And then perhaps next turn, discount Shivan dragons. Didn't think I'm playing the Whelp beforehand. Come to me. So I get to play Servant into Shivan Dragon. And next turn maybe play the Whelp before activating Sarkon. As our opponent replays Kethys. I have a couple options here, including dealing three to Kethys, and then the one extra from Whelp, I guess, would finish it off, so that seems good. <laughs> Time for a roast. And then I'm probably fine playing an extra Sheevan Dragon, even if our opponent has an Urza's Ruinous Blast, they wouldn't be able to play it yet, since they don't have a legendary permanence. Don't know if our opponent's playing any other sweepers that we might have to play around. Otherwise, I could have just tried to find an extra dragon with Icon. But if they don't have a sweeper here, they're probably dead. Right, got Eternal Oketra, powerful card. But it's not going to save them here. This can conjure an extra Shivan Dragon. Go upstairs. There is no better ally than a Attack, and we can use the Fire Breathing if we want to, but won't even be necessary here. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a five-color Joda deck. So being able to deal three to it with Sarkon's important. This hand, I think, needs to find some early acceleration so we can play turn three Sarkon, and Signet will do just fine. A Braid can deal with the Ramp Artifact. So our hands... Shaping up nicely, wouldn't mind an extra land along the way. Opponent is keeping up three mana, which is a little suspicious, so... Most likely a counter for Sarkon, but still gonna play him since we don't have anything else going on. And then next turn I can exert a Glorybringer to kill Joda. That seems fine. Uh, let's put it back on the library, I suppose. And then for now, can replay Sarkon, can play Demanding Dragon. I guess Demanding Dragon is a bit more mana efficient. Gets countered, so opponent's playing a counter heavy build. Okay, so Sarkon plus a braid. I want to braid first and then move to my second main phase so they can't use that floating mana from Signet to maybe play a two mana counterspell. Opponent didn't float any mana, so can do it now. Conjure up Shivan Dragon. Plenty of answers for Joda. And we can start deploying our dragons, maybe with a mana discount. So we can play multiples in the same turn. Alright, so... Got a couple options. 
Killing the Glyph Weaver seems important. Can use a Dragon Fire. And then maybe make dragons cheaper, play 5 mana Shivan Dragon. I want to keep Glory Bringer as a potential surprise. But yeah, it looks like our opponent has seen enough. We've got an active Planeswalker, answers for Joda, and we're ahead on board. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Toxtril, the Corrosive, and our hand's okay. Early interaction with Lightning Bolts, a Whelp to discount our Dragons, and then a Dragon's Horde for ramp and card advantage. So looks like a blue-black, maybe slightly more controlling deck. And let's bolt a bird. Yeah, Fearsome Whelp is a powerful magic card. Could maybe be changed in the future, who knows. Rex and Arena to provide card advantage for our opponents. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna play the Hellkite here. Could also go with Servant into Dragon Egg. Doesn't seem very powerful. And if I play Hellkite next turn, playing Sarkon will generate a 4 4 token. So, seems like a good sequence. Can play one mana Dragon Egg after playing Dragon's Horde to immediately draw a card with it. Alright, it's gonna be a Falcon Wrath Noble. Good target for Sarkon dealing three damage. So we're dealing a healthy amount of damage. And Dragon's Horde will also trigger the Hellkite, so... Opponent's got two threats they need to deal with between our Planeswalker and the Hellkite. And they're also on a clock with their own Phyrexian Arena. So the more damage we deal, the better. Opponent's gonna pass with a bunch of mana up. So let's see, is this on cast? It is. So, yeah, probably want to conjure up a Shivan Dragon. And then I'm okay if the Dragon Sword gets countered, I think. Opponent deciding what to do with a horde, they let it resolve. In which case, playing Dragon Egg is a hedge in case opponent casts a sweeper next turn. Put a counter on the Dragon's Horde as well. And then I can draw a card with it as opposed to playing a two drop. Alright, opponent's at 6. Shivan Dragon becomes a little cheaper. So our opponent did not do anything with uh, 5 mana here. And... or board is resilience against any sweeper, so... Not sure how they're gonna get out of this. 1 mana short of casting their commander. Ooh, a Meat Hook Massacre, that might do it, but still gonna draw a card. So 
Their opponent gains three. Get another counter on the Dragon's Horde. And I could use the Fire Breathing here. And that should be just enough to kill them, actually. Can double tap Q to float all our mana. So seven is plenty. And our opponent sees a writing on the wall and concedes. So yeah, Dragon Egg being a nice way to kind of hedge your bets against a potential sweeper. Came in handy twice now. So yeah, overall, quite happy with this Monoret Sarkon Dragon deck. If you ever get bored of using Sarkon Wanderer to Shiv as your commander, you can always swap it out with maybe a Sarkon Fireblood or some other legendary card that's dragon-themed. But uh, four mana Sarkon is probably your best bet for now. So yeah, let me know in the comments which historic brawl deck you would like to see covered next, and I might get to it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.